What was your favorite match or, or just a list of a couple of matches that are your favorite of all time? That I've had? No, no, just any match that you would like to watch, watch. that you've liked to watch. My favorite match of all time was the the match that's on, you can watch it on YouTube, is Marty Jones against Mark Rocco from 1978. Marty's wearing red tights. That's my favorite match. Then those 89 Flair Steamboat matches. Yeah. I used to, I, I got those on tape and I used to do my squats to watching them. Yeah. That one hour match, I used to put that on and I used to just do, do, and do squats Hindus. watching it or step ups. I used to do that and I thought, well, if I can do this, I can keep up with them. Right. And I'd do it for a full hour with them. Or, but that series of matches they had were fantastic. My favorite live match that I ever saw was in South Africa, which was again Marty Jones against Gamma Singh from Calgary. Gamma was incredible. If you watch him from the Stampede stuff, he, wor he worked as a villain. When he was a wrestling babyface, we got to Durban, it's an outside show, and they were on main event, I'd been on early. It, it was always a walk-up business there. About five o'clock, it started torrential raining. By the time we get to the show at seven, there's like, Usually there'd be probably four, five, six thousand 5, 6,000 there. It's a tennis stadium. There's probably a 1,000 die-hard fans. They go on last in torrential rain with all the fans moved up into a stand, a covered stand, so there's nobody sat around ringside at all, just empty, except for me. I went and sat in the rain, pouring down, and they did 12 five-minute rounds straight through with no Jeez. falls. And it was like that scene in that film Paradise Alley, you know, at the end when they're, like, slipping on the water and, like... Yeah. And they, they just work, and I'm, I'm like... I'm totally in awe to this day of, of, of what I witnessed that day. I've never seen it on... There's, I, I, maybe it's on a, a film somewhere because there was one just just turned up on YouTube recently. I had no idea it existed. My first ever time in Durban in 1989. There's a full match of me and, uh, and there when I was 20. So somebody may have filmed that match, that, but it, it was in the rain. Right. I don't know if I'd want to watch it because it might not hold up right. to my memories and that, right. that would ruin it for me. But whew, what else have I seen? I've seen that. Well, what did you and even then I wasn't ready on the nationwide scene. Right. So I went to work for Brian. And from first night, first of all, I had to call up Max Crabtree. Oh, I had to 18-year-old kid. Excuse Jesus. me, Mr. Crabtree. I'm, I'm handing my notice in. You know what? What? <laughs> <laughs> kid, I'm, you're on TV with, Big, with Ash Early. You, you know, you, <laughs> you mean, it was, what, what more could you want? I said, well, that's not the career I want. I want to travel the world and be a... You're going nowhere, kid. Worst mistake you've ever made. You're going nowhere. Wow. I mean, that'd, that'd be pretty heavy-duty news when you're talking to the man. not used to anybody talking to him like yeah. that, right? Or telling, you know, having an 18-year-old kid telling you that. So he said, well, it's up to you, son. He said, good luck. Because I always, I was okay with me. And when I went back to work for Max every now and then, because, I, like I say, once I started traveling, I could pick and choose, and mm -hmm. they used to have to call me then. Yep. When we heard you're in town, can you come work for us? For and when I went back to work for him, when I was, like, late 19s and 20 and 21, until I came over here, yeah. I just learned so much from him because he, he sort of had a bit of admiration for what right. I'd done, and I wasn't one of his... You know, is if you're yeah, stuck yeah. working for somebody, they can treat you the way they want. Right. When they sort of have... An, or that you get to a certain standard with mm -hmm. things, and people... Yeah. They realize you're a stand-up fellow. And then I started teaching me stuff and, and learning how to do it. So I went to work for Brian, and from day one, I was on with the best people I had. The first match I had for him was a fellow called Rocky Moran, who was Fitz's dad had trained. He was Fitz. Wow. They grew up together, Rocky and, and, and Fitz. So he was like a, another version of Fitz. That was my first match, and I wrestled him a lot. And then... I, I was put in a tag with Robbie Brookside. We, like we'd, we'd be tagging as the Golden Boys, me and him together, and, and or I'd be in singles matches. You know, within, within the few months, that was the first time I wrestled Finley. Like, because uh, it was a weird time when the TV was sort of in '86. I have to backtrack a bit here with the world of sport. When they moved it to the 12 o'clock spot, for some reason, Dale Martin's lost the exclusivity of it. Mm -hmm. One week it would be Dale Martins, one week it would be Brian Dixon. Uh. So when I went to work for Dixon, he still had TV. It was weird. There was yeah. no, he never did any promos or anything. Yeah. It was, so one week it'd be his show. But I was quitting that part of it 
to go to work, start from scratch in another company. But he still had TV. Right. I wasn't on it much. I did a few, but not right. much. But that was my learning spell from 18 to, to 20. That was when, well, in fact, 18 to 19, that made the world a difference. That year that I worked for him, I was either in the tags with Robbie or... Uh, well, tell me oh, about the... Oh, sorry. And, and, and because of the change with TV, all the talent were working for everybody. Where at one time you had to work for just right. one or the other. Right. Well, all of a sudden, Finley's coming work. He's, he's still working for Max, but he's working for Brian Dixon as well on odd, odd days. And well, straight away, I'm working with Finley. Like I'm 18 and I'm working with, you know, and he was the man. He was the man at that time. I know, know, that's what I wanted to ask yeah. because he's one of my favorites of all time. It wasn't anything in rounds. It was two and three minutes of right. belly butts and a splash. And the music, you know, he's one of the few wrestlers that had music and uh. coming out and then having, having every place you went to, you'd have the local kids band playing him into the ring or yeah. marching band and everything. Yeah. It was, big production. A, it was a big production and a spectacle and you got carried away with it, you know, yeah. it was just, and he'd get in and two belly, you, you know, and it was always, his opponents were monsters. Yeah. So it was just a, a incredible morality play in front of you, right? You just saw this, oh, oh, and he's out there smiling and waving and everybody, yeah. and then two belly butts, a big splash, and that was it. Do you think about going back to, uh, shoot, what was it, WrestleMania 3, the, yeah. the Savage versus Steamboat match? <sighs> This is a weird one for me. Uh, okay, enough said. No. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and, uh, and it really put yeah. me off. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still love it. If, you, if you just watch it now for what it is, yeah. and, and I mean, it's, it's for wrestling fan standards, it's one of the greatest matches of all time. Incredible. But in America. Because you get different guys. You, you, know, you get guys that are, that, are, that are funk guys. You get guys that are yeah. race guys. You get guys that are flair guys. You guys get a Michaels guys or a Bret Hart. Are you, where are you at on that? Show. Steve Austin show. All right, back in business here, talking with Lord Stephen Regal, William Regal, whatever I'm calling King you. King of the Jabroni tribe. King That's, of the Jabroni used to, tribe. We used to sing that song all the time to me. What was that all about? I don't know. Lord Stephen Regal, King, King of, of the, the Jabroni, Jabroni tribe. tribe. I don't know. You, you, you had all kinds of verses for it and everything. Dude, you actually put thought into it. Different space at a different time. Yeah. We were on a bunch of different levels back then. We were both <laughs> on the straight and narrow these days. <laughs> And then it kept going, and you know, it got to the point at the end. I mean, I, I, I'd, I started. See, like I got my break on TV when I was eighteen in nineteen eighty six, and you know, I'd worked all these different things happened to me, and I, I'd finally got to work for for Dale Martins for the TV company, but I wasn't ready for it, and I decided by then I wanted to be this other style of wrestler, this heavyweight kind of. I wasn't ready for that because I still was skinny and tall. And, right, right. But I, that's where I wanted my career to go. I'd, I'd set a career path for myself. I got put straight away, basically, as Big Daddy's tag partner because that's what it was always tagged. So you'd was. probably done all the work and then well, he'd he, come he, in. Yeah, he do, just, you do the selling. Yeah, and he do, comes in, makes, his, makes the comeback. And,